Hello everyone, welcome to a new uh, MuleSoft video tutorial on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com. This video tutorial is part of a series of video tutorials on MuleSoft in which I will, I will be explaining different scenarios and implementing uh, different message flows and explaining how we can use AnyPoint Studio to implement our integration applications using MuleSoft. For this video tutorial, the scenario that I'm going to implement is a simple user management scenario in which we will be exposing a REST web service to the client and client will be able to use that REST service and provide us certain parameter. And based on that parameter, we will be uh, getting some data from Oracle database. And once we receive the data from Oracle database, we will be returning it back to the client in the JSON format. For this purpose, uh, we will be using Oracle database in the backend and the type of messages that will be uh, sending uh, sent back to the client will be in JSON format. Please note that this uh, is the first video of this series of uh, video tutorials and I will be explaining uh, different other operations uh, from uh, this user management scenario, including how we can uh, delete data, how we can insert data and how we can update data into the database. So uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe so that you are able to get all these videos in future. So as we have explained the scenario, now let's directly jump into the implementation part and see how we implement this scenario. As I explained that uh, I will be using Oracle uh, in the backend. So I have already uh, one local uh, Express Edition uh, local uh, Oracle schema in my database. And uh, you can see I have already created a use, uh, users table and this user table is a simple table with user ID, username and user status columns. The user ID is uh, generated based on a sequence and we will have username and user status as well. So what we will do is that we will uh, create a REST service where user will be, client will be passing a ID and based on that, I, that ID we will be uh, querying from the database and then uh, we will be returning data to the client. So what we will do is that we will allow user to pass a query parameter and if user passes that query parameter and in that parameter uh, an ID is passed, we will be returning data for that user. But if there is no ID uh, uh, provided by the client, then we will be returning data of all the users from the database. So I have already uh, created a project in AnyPoint Studio. And uh, this is very simple and you know already how we create a project by going into file new and we choose new project and here we specify the name of the project and then uh, we already have uh, runtime selected in our case and we just click finish since I have already created the project so I will just cancel it. So uh, in order to start the implementation we have uh, a message flow already created by default uh, in our project once we create it. So I will start implementing directly within the same message flow. So uh, from the HTTP uh, module, I will drop this listener to the message flow as we want to expose our REST service. So once we uh, drop this uh, listener into our project, the first thing that we will need to do is to configure our REST service. And in order to configure our REST service by specifying uh, all the details, including the connection uh, host and port, we will have to click on this listener and then we will have to go its, to its properties. So in the properties, we will go to basic setting and we have connector configuration. We will click on this plus button. Here we need to specify host and port uh, for our connector. You can use any of the available port on your machine. For my case, I will just use 8090. And to make sure that uh, the connector configurations are correct and the port and host that you provided are correct and available, you can just click on this test connection button. So once you will click on this test connector, uh, you can see that for me 8090 is already in use. So in, it means that I will have to use a different port. So let me use 8091. So you can see I see uh, I'm getting a message test connection successful, which means that port 8091 is available in my machine. So I will just click on OK button. Here you will have to specify the base path. So I will specify the base path as users. So that whenever someone is going to call my uh, service, this REST service, he will have to specify local host as I specified in the host, colon, uh, the port which I specified 8091, slash users, and then he will have to pass the query parameters. 
Another thing that I need to configure in the advanced tab is to uh, specify the allowed methods. So I, in my case, I will just mention get as I want only get method to be available as part of this uh, REST service. So this is the basic configuration for our HTTP listener. So once uh, we have configured the listener, then we need to proceed to the subsequent steps. The first important step in our use case is that we need to uh, get the query parameter that is passed by the client and save it into a flow variable. So let's let's add a flow variable. Uh, we will use this set variable component and we will drop it to the message flow. And in this set variable, we will have to configure uh, in the in the general properties. We will specify a name. Let's name it as user ID. You can name it anything. And for the value, we will switch to expression mode and we will have to specify attributes dot query para query params dot whatever the name of the query param. So query param will be user ID. So we are uh, making sure that uh, we are basically specifying that whenever user will pass a query parameter, the parameter name in the URL will be user ID. So here we are specifying that user ID will be passed. Uh, we can uh, also specify here the default that if there is no user ID, what will be the default? So that's also possible, but for now let's keep it simple. Basically for this tutorial, uh, uh, I'm making uh, sure that implementation is kept as simple as possible without any advanced thing, without any error handling or without any fancy things. Just to uh, share with you the basic idea how we can use this message flow to uh, retrieve data from the database and return it back to, back, return it back to the client. So after we set the variable uh, and just uh, for the sake of uh, uh, our own understanding, I want to log it, whatever the parameter has been passed by the client. So I'll just put a simple logger and in the message, I will just uh, log vars dot user ID. Whatever user ID will be passed by the client, I want to log it to the logger. And once we will log it, it will be showing in the console once our application will be running. So after we have logged this, the next thing that we need to do is to query from the database. For that, we will have to uh, use this select component from the database module and we will draw, uh, drag it to the message flow. This select, we need to do a little more configuration as we have to do the connector configuration for the database. Let me first change the name of this uh, component to get users data, get users. And for the basic uh, configurations, we will click on this plus button and here in the connection, we need to uh, specify, uh, we need to choose out of these available option that what kind of database we want to connect. In our case, we want to connect to Oracle. So we will choose, choose Oracle. And here you can see that it's giving us an error that required libraries for Oracle JDBC driver are missing. So we will have to click on this configure button. We have two options since this AnyPoint Studio is an Eclipse based IDE. So you can use Maven for the dependencies, for handling the dependencies. And once you use this, you can get all your dependencies downloaded automatically from the Maven repository. But in our case, uh, I have already a local uh, OJDBC 7.jar available in my machine. So I will just use it using the local file option. So once you choose this local file option, then you will have to browse and choose the file. I have OJDBC 7.jar available in my local machine. I just select it and I will click on this OK button. So now you can see that this color has changed green, which means that uh, I have a correct OJDBC library available. Now I need to configure and specify all the connection details. Host, I have running uh, Oracle XC in my local, so I will just choose localhost. Port is 1521 default. I will use specify the username and password. And then I will have to specify the service name. For my case, it's XE. I will just click on this test connection button, and if everything is correct, then I will be getting a success message here. And in case of any issue, I'll have to fix it. Yeah, so it shows me that test connection is successful, which means that I have successfully configured the connection. So I will just click on this OK button to save all the changes that I have done. And now what I need to do is to dynamically create the query. So with the dynamically created query, we will be querying the records from the database. As I explained before that we can do two things. We can specify that if 
we don't have any uh, query parameter provided. Uh, we can use a cho choice router here and, and select all the data. But in case if uh, uh, we have a user ID provided in the query parameter, then we have to fetch specific record for that user. So let's uh, uh, ignore now for, for this case, uh, the choice router and simply uh, make sure that whatever user provides us as a user ID, we return data for only that user. So here we will have to write the select statement, select static from users, where user underscore ID equal to colon, we will have to specify user underscore ID. And when we provide it with this format colon, this means that we want to provide it in the form of an input parameters to construct it dynamically. So we will use uh, this as below, user underscore ID, same name, colon, and we will specify wars dot user ID. So basically this user ID will be filled by whatever is the user ID that we saved in the set variable. So based on the query parameter, this dynamic query will be constructed. So we just save it and we can see that the error uh, red um, mark uh, from this get users has gone, which means now it's correct. The next thing that we need to do is to transform our response and uh, transform our payload. We have uh, plenty of options available uh, in uh, AnyPoint Studio in message flow. We can uh, uh, do any type, of, uh, any type of transformation for our response message. But for our case, what we want to do is that whatever we receive as a response from this database uh, select statement, we just want to pass it in the JSON format back to the client. So here, once we drag this transform message, we will not uh, define our own metadata to do any other changes. We will just simply change it to applications that JSON format. And here, without making any other changes, we will just specify payload. So what we want is that whatever is the payload, we want to convert it into the JSON format and return it back, return it back to the client. Now, if we want, we can do another log here to uh, another logger here to log this. Uh, payload but in our case uh, since we are already passing it to the client so we will be able to see it on the client side so let's uh, ignore it this is a very very simple uh, uh, use case and a simple scenario as you can see i haven't done anything fancy i haven't gone into the advanced topics i haven't done any error handling uh, i haven't used the choice router to uh, take the decisions based on the uh, users uh, provided uh, parameters just to make it simple, just to make it easy, and just to make sure that this video doesn't get uh, too much longer, uh, we will make it. Uh, we will implement it up till this point only, and to make it very simple. So once we are done with this point, we will just uh, run our application. So once we will uh, right click and this uh, choose this option, run project, then it will start. Uh, uh, we will have to save it, and uh, we want to stop. So I have something else running, so I want to stop that and i want to run this one in in in, in my uh, runtime so here it will take a bit of time to build it and then after uh, build is successful then it will be deployed you can see build is successful so it will take a bit of time depending on your machine specifications and depending on the project load and it will uh, deploy this uh, solution into mule runtime and then you will be able to call it from the client side So as you can see that uh, now we have, uh, we can see in the console it's deployed and its uh, status is uh, successfully deployed. So now we can go to the client and uh, uh, invoke this REST API and see the response. Since this is a REST API, so you can call it from Postman or you can use any other client. Even you can uh, you can uh, use a browser for this get operation. So my case, let's simply use the browser. So in the browser, I will have to specify the URL, localhost colon 8091 slash users question mark user ID and I'm specifying three so I'm just hitting this and you can see that I received a response in JSON format with the user uh, status inactive user ID three and username Michael and if I go to database I can verify that this is exactly what we have in the database if I specify uh, user ID one I should be getting a result for the user ID one since I did not implement any error handling and I also didn't uh, uh, cover the default case and I didn't add any choice router. So if I specify a wrong or any uh, non-existing uh, uh, 
uh, user ID. So we should be getting blank response as there is no user with the user ID 33. So that's how we implement uh, this type of message flow to query from the database uh, uh, based on uh, based on a certain query parameter. So I hope that uh, this video tutorial, which is uh, explaining a very simple scenario and uh, explaining how we can uh, use the database uh, module and query from the Oracle databases will be helpful for you. And if you like this video, uh, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel as I will be uploading more videos as part of this video series uh, covering different basic as well as advanced topic uh, on MuleSoft and implementing uh, Mule applications using AnyPoint Studio. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, you can always uh, write uh, under the video uh, in the comment section and I will make sure that I'll respond, I'll respond to your queries whenever I see those. Thank you very much.